Welcome to FaithWorks, the enlightening and empowering program that builds your faith to help you overcome every single challenge in this life. My name is Kaude Adeshoga. I'm your host. I want you to sit back, listen, and be blessed. God bless you. I remember once I prayed in tongues for so much that I couldn't speak English again. <laughs> and I would come around and I would not be able to say because I couldn't communicate in English or Yoruba, any language. But if someone spoke in tongues, I knew what they said. If someone spoke in tongues, I, I spoke, sorry, if someone spoke to me in English, say, oh, good morning, and I say, Lukabani Kataraba, they will understand the tongue I spoke and they will interpret it. If I need water, I tell them, Kalimo to Brenda Katalimo, oh, you ask for water? I say, yeah. I say, oh, that's yes. Then they will go and get the water. Whether they were born again or not. I just spoke only tongues. It went for about three, four hours. I couldn't speak English. The hand of God was mighty. Pray! Pray in tongues. And lift your head above this natural realm. The natural realm has nothing to offer other than death. Pain, sickness, disease, and infirmity. Right above those storms. And walk in the realm of the divine. Where you call the shots. Amen? Yeah. Praying in other tongues. Um, Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. I'll read from verse 19. Where I'm actually going is verse 26. Maybe I should just leave all the long scripture. Romans 8, just verse 26. Likewise, the Holy Spirit helps our infirmities. It's giving help to our infirmities. What's the infirmity? For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. You know what to pray for. But you don't know how to present it well before God. The Holy Ghost aids you by praying in other tongues to make your presentation perfect before the Father so you can get, you can get a reply. Did you hear me? So if I say, I need a husband, and I don't know the reasons to give, just pray in other tongues. Father, I need a husband. Maloko, Sebrede, Kalimata. The Holy Spirit is aiding your presentation of how to present the need for a husband to the father, which you don't know or you don't have the proper reasons to give to the father. And in doing so, he presents it such as the father will accept it and answer your prayer. So you just say, I need a, a husband. Father, grant me a husband. This I ask in the name of Jesus. Molukusi vrede kalibo rakande is aiding your infirmity, is aiding your weakness, is aiding your inability to argue prevailing with the Father. You don't know how you ought to present your case with groanings which cannot be understood. Verse 27. And he that searcheth the hearts know what is the mind of the Spirit. For he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Now, if you look at some Bibles, he didn't put the will of God. He put according to God. According to God. How many of you have Bibles that says according to God? Let me see your hand up. Oh, please. I know, okay. Put the original King James. The will of God is written in italics. Is, your, is it written in italics? Right? They put it in bracket. That's how it is. That means it is not in the original text. You know, when Jesus was in the boat, and there was a great storm, and he was sleeping, you must understand, the Bible is interpreted from Hebrew language to English. So it needs scholars to interpret it. Now, sometimes when they are interpreting it, most of them don't have this mindset that we have today. So there are certain things they find it difficult to express. Am I communicating? Now, when Jesus was in the boat sleeping, and there was a great storm, and they woke him up, he didn't say, peace be still. 
Now, many of times when your dog is making noise and barking, and you're upset, when you get to the back, they say, come on, shh, stop all that. Now, what Jesus said, shh. Now, they couldn't interpret, shh. <laughs> or, it's an expression of, what's the meaning of that? Hey, come, 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 come. That's what Jesus did. Hey, hey. And the wind calmed. Jesus. Say, hey, hey. if I hear, calm. And the wind just sees. Oh, so they wrote, peace be still. It's not peace be still, he said. Now, according to God, they, they say, no, how can it be according to God? So they put in bracket the will of God. The will of it is not there. In Psalm 2, let me show you a concept. In Hebrews 2, it says, I will worship you in the midst of my brethren. Now, that's Jesus talking. He said, I will worship my father. I think we need to look at it. Hebrews chapter 2. I'm just giving an introduction of this. Hebrews chapter 2. I'll read from verse 11. Sorry, from verse 10. Hebrews 2 from verse 10. For it became him for whom are all things, by whom are all things, in bringing many sons into glory, to make the captain of the salvation perfect through sufferings. Verse 11. For both he that sanctifieth, and they who are sanctified are all of one, for which cause is not ashamed to call them brethren. So Jesus is the one sanctifying his brethren, and they're all one because he sanctifies them. Verse 12, saying, I will declare thy name to my brethren in the midst of the church. I will sing praise unto thee. So Jesus is saying in the church, I will tell the church your name, and I will praise to you, Father. Now how does Jesus praise? Do you see Jesus on Sunday? Can you see Jesus here? How did Jesus worship his father? How did Jesus praise his father? During the praise and worship. That's why you don't put somebody who is not in the spirit to sing, to lead his song. That's a, that's a disaster in that service. It's not a showbiz. It's a ministry. It's a ministry. Because as you open your mouth to worship, Jesus gets into you and gets that worship to the Father, and he tells the Father, this is the worship I present to you. Then he said, I will tell the congregation about you, Father. I will tell them your name. Now, how does he tell the name? Have you seen Jesus come and tell us the name of the Father? How is he going to do it? Through the preaching. So, if you have a minister of God who doesn't know God, Standing on the podium, he has cut off Jesus in that service. Church is not about air condition and lovely seats and tea after service, before service, and mirrors after service. It's not about good music. It's not about fine podium. It's not about fantastic sound. It's about God being expressed to the people. Those are benefits that follow. That is the main cause, God being expressed. So what Jesus is saying is, he says, that's why Thessalonians says that um, 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 4 or so, he says that my preaching will be in the Holy Ghost in much assurance by the Spirit. So when you are preaching, you can always know which Jesus is talking and which Jesus is not talking. So when you go to a church, you will know when the pastor stands, you know when Jesus is expressing to his brethren through him, or is Satan expressing to his own brethren through him? It's one of the ways to know a synagogue of Satan. Who is being expressed? To whose brethren are they talking to? Is it the Lord or Satan? Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, how do you pray through God? He says, the Holy Ghost, let me repeat it, in Romans chapter 8 again. Romans chapter 8, I believe you're not bored, are you? 
Verse 20, 27. He that searches the heart knoweth what the mind of the Spirit is, because he, the Spirit, makes intercession for the saints according to God. So anytime time you open your mouth to speak in tongues. The Bible says in Acts 2, they began to speak in other tongues as the Holy Spirit gave them what? Utterance. The Holy Spirit gives you the utterance. What it gives you, you don't understand. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue does not understand what he's saying. How be it in the Spirit? He's speaking mysteries. So the Jesus said, the Holy Ghost will not speak of himself. What he hears me say, he will tell you. So Jesus starts the conversation and says, Rebos Kalibo. The Holy Ghost said, Kalimo Koto. You say, Rebo Kotaka. The Father receives Rebos Kolu Makata. It is Jesus that is praying, not you. That's why you don't know what you're saying. Because the conversation between Jesus, the Holy Ghost, and the Father. You are just a vessel channeling the sound out. But he said, while you are channeling it out, because it's power from Jesus, it will be edifying your spirit and your soul. It's power from the divine. It's the divine speaking. So the Holy Ghost gave them utterances. So when you're speaking, Lebos, Kalibo, Korobon, Kotaka, Chaka, that is Jesus talking. That's why you are making intercession according to God, not the will of God. God is the one making the intercession through the Holy Ghost, through you, to the Father. But those that put the will of God were scared. They said, no, it cannot be. It cannot be. Even some people, if you give somebody in some churches, some part of the scripture to write, they will not be able to write it. For we are seated with him in the heavenly places. Father, he said, no. He said, he that overcometh, I will grant to do what? Sit where? Where? Not beside me. On my throne. So, if you, if, you, if, you, if you put somebody who is religious to write it, say, and because we will we'll sit with Jesus on his throne. Eh? Can we sit with Jesus on his throne? God is the one sitting on that throne. No! We are sitting with him on his throne. On the throne of God. The same throne Jesus is sitting on. We are on it with you together. If you overcome by faith, you sit on his throne. Not just your throne. Jesus' throne. As I sat beside my father. How many people can write that? They will just put, if they interpret, they say, shall sit on the throne he gives you beside him. <laughs> the religious man can handle some things. It's beyond what a religious man can happen. Handle. So many things in scripture, a religious man cannot handle it. And Moses told God, what you want to do is wrong. And God apologized. Ouch! So Moses said to God, please change your mind of what you said. And God said that where Moses was okay. That's how they would put it. Who would put that Moses reprimanded God? That don't you, is that no reprimandation? God said, I will wipe them out. God said, no, Moses, if you do this, people will say you were able to bring them out. You were not able to bring them out. Can't you see? You shouldn't do that. Is that no reprimandation? Moses reprimanded God. And God apologized. If they write it, the religious man can't handle it. They say, no. And Moses pleaded. <laughs> and God accepted. And God allowed Moses' word to stay. No. Moses had his way. So when you're speaking in other tongues, you're lending your vessel for Jesus to communicate with his father. Praise God. Do you desire to live and operate God's way of doing things? Do you desire to understand how faith works? Fundamentals of Faith is a book written by Kayode Adishoga. It teaches in simple terms how to operate the God kind of faith that helps you overcome all hurdles of life. Fundamentals of Faith is available for purchase at Trem Bookshop Obani Koro Lagos and Bible Wonderland Stadium Suruleri Lagos. Get a copy today. No wonder they say, if you pray always that way, we will defend you from the crisis coming. We will make sure it has no effect on you. And now I'm beginning to understand why Jesus said that. Amen? Amen? So I told you that concept. The same way, that's why those people were laughing in the spirit. It was God laughing through them. They didn't will to laugh. It was God laughing through them. Praise God. It was just laughing through them. They laughed for days. 
And love, God was laughing. He says God will laugh in the heavens. He's not going to laugh in the He's going to laugh. He has ceased from all his works. He's not coming to give direct prophecy to anybody. He's going to give prophecy through the saints, through the ministers. Praise God. Hallelujah. So if he laughs, he's going to laugh through you. Amen? Amen. So, we said, praise God. God wants you to speak in other tongues, and he wants you to pray in other tongues. He wants you to spend time praying in the spirit and in your understanding. So in 1 Corinthians 14, back again, 1 Corinthians 14. Verse. We said, the tongue is a mystery that only God knows. So in verse 8, or let me back up to verse 7. Even things without life giving sound whether pipe or harp, except they give a distinction in the sounds, how shall it be known what is piped or harped? So you can't just play even the keyboard. It must give us a melody. It must give us a message. So when you play the keyboard, praise my soul, the king. You don't just say, down, down. You say, what's wrong with that man? That's what people say, right? Down. Say, oh, excuse me, I'm getting out of here. That's what people say, right? But when you say, my Mm, dun, 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 dun. So you say, even things that are not living, when they give sound, it must mean something. He's telling you your tongue is meaning something. That's what he's trying to come across. He said, it must mean something. Be it a harp, be it an instrument. In verse 8, if a trumpet give an uncertain sound, who will prepare to the battle? That means if they give a sound and nobody can interpret what the sound is, you will not be able to prepare to know. If it's a warning sound, you will know what it means. If, if they're telling you, if you're, if you're driving on the road, and you're saying, wow, 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 wow. That sound is saying there is an emergency. Move out of the way. It could be a fire truck. It could be an ambulance. It could be a police vehicle. But you can interpret it meaning move out of the way. He said if that sound gives a sound that cannot be interpreted, it's said to be useless. Likewise, verse 9, when you utter tongues that cannot be understood, you won't know what you have spoken. you just spoken into the air. So what he's saying, you can know the meaning of your tongue by asking God for the interpretation. That's what he's saying. Verse 13, Wherefore let him that speak in an unknown tongue pray, that he may what? Interpret. So it's a form of knowing mysteries. Things on the mind of God that he's doing all over the nations of the earth by just speaking in tongues and asking for the interpretation. So when you speak in other tongues, you are assessing the mind of God by asking when you ask for the interpretation. God is saying, watch therefore, pray in tongues always, and you're guaranteed to escape anything that is coming on the face of the earth. Amen? Amen? So you should pray for the interpretation. And then in verse 15, what is it then? Pray in the spirit, pray in the understanding also. Sing in the spirit, sing in the under, and praying that the choir will grow in this grace so that they can sing in the spirit. Amen. We've seen their spirit sing in understanding. But they can still sing. It's a prophetic, it's a psalm. It's a psalm. Sometimes you just hold the microphone. You just sing a song you've never known. It's a message. It's an edification. It's an exhortation from God. Amen. So pray in your understanding, pray in the spirit. I'll go into details and technicalities of praying in tongues. I'm just giving you an introduction. That's why I told you it's a basic teaching. It's for crash. Which one is before? What was the first one they go when they are two, one to two years? 
Is it daycare or crash? Which one is junior, daycare or crash? Mrs. Daniel, where are you? Eh? Which one is junior? Is it crash? I saw I saw Mrs. Daniel now. Is it crash? Eh? Crash is first. Then daycare is second. This is crash. They're the same thing. I don't trust your answer. Because I don't have any of you. <laughs> Praise God. Verse, seven, verse 16. When you bless with the Spirit, how shall he that occupy the room of the unlearned say amen at thy giving of thanks? Seeing and understandeth not what thou seest. For thou verily giveth thanks how? Where? The best way to give thanks is to speak in tongues. That tongues give thanks for what you know that God has done and for what you don't know that God has done. Labone Kraboho Shikamakanda Kalimo Si Kataima Brindelemo Kuzuma Kali Kashiti Brindele Kesi Vredi Kesu Vredi Kesi Katali Vondolobo Sibrade Kasila Makatata Le Bokokoro Bokozia Mangdele Sebrede Keziva Vrondolobo Zima Katata Bre Kali Vosuma Katacha Verse 23 says, with men of all the tongues and other lips, I'll speak to these people. He calls it a rest in Isaiah 26. It's a rest when you speak in tongues. It gives you a calmness. If you're agitated, speak in tongues. When you finish, you'll be calm. You'll be peaceful. He says it's a refreshing. It's a refreshing from God. With the tongues and other lips, will I speak to these people? For this shall be their refreshing and their rest. It's Isaiah 26. He says it shall be their refreshing. And it shall be the arrest. What I just want to do today is to stir you up this week to spend more time praying in other tongues. At every opportunity you have, pray in tongues. Pray in the Spirit. You know, one of the pillars of faith is prayer. Faith sits on seven pillars. Say, beloved, building up yourselves, G20, on your most holy faith, praying how? In the Holy Ghost. In the Holy Ghost. Not in your understanding, the Holy Ghost is one of the pillars of faith. And there's so many people like Peter. By this time next week, I'll have gotten my um, contract. If you don't pray, you may not get it. It's not about boasting. said, I will not deny you. Never. Jesus said, pray that you do not enter into temptation. Avert the negative prophecy. Establish the good prophecy. What was he doing? Sleeping. He came back. He said, you are still sleeping. Pray. He repeated it. That you do not enter into tem what? Temptation. Pray. What happened again? He slept off. No wonder a tiny maid rattled him. Say me. I can never deny Jesus. I would rather die. If you don't pray. He's not Boko Haram you need. You don't believe Boko Haram on his far. You just need a, just a tailor that is very angry, shaking his uh, scissors. If you don't pray, you, the person will degenerate to that. Robo si karibo kotono monde. Kaliba kataya mande. Emphasis of prayer is made at harvest. Rebo koshanda. Kandele kete. So you can establish what is yours. Mbokolo mo ye kete ki yaboko zende. It's not enough for them to make you an offer. I told somebody once. I said, ah, I guess I should leave that also. I said, the president... And commander-in-chief is going to send for you and offer you an appointment. She said, I receive it in Jesus' name. That's not enough! Then, two weeks later, the president sent for her. He said, I have a job for you. I have an appointment for you. 
Give me just a little while. I will call you soon. He never called her till he left office. She asked me what was missing. I said prayer was one of them. Prayer was what? One of them. It's not enough to have the offer. You need to pray. La boku yamaka. Are you getting it? Yekele mokoto bokoto. Kadele ne ne ne. Yikabatongo chakacha. Said, oh, son Timothy, I leave this child that you wage a good warfare. What? Based on the offers you have been promised. They promise you some positions. Don't go and sleep, Timothy. It's not the time to sleep. Is it the time to what? Pray. A man offers to marry you. That's not the time to sleep. The powers that be can make him change his mind. That's the time to do what? Pray. A lady was telling me that on the eve of her wedding, her marriage was cancelled. She was distraught. Said she went to God in prayer and asked what happened. God said she heard prayerlessness. Prayerlessness. Prayer. Was it God's will for her to marry? Yes. Jesus said, pray that what? Thy will be done. Where? In my life. As it has been proposed in heaven. What if you don't pray? Another will may be done. And that's what you see in so many lives. Will that is not of God being done. Why? Prayerlessness. I believe you have been blessed by that message. And I know your faith has been built up. And I know all those challenges in life are all going to fall before you in the mighty name of Jesus. I want you to know Hebrews 12 says, Jesus is the author of and the finisher of our faith. You need him in this walk. And so if you're out there and you don't have Jesus in your life, I want you to say after me, say, Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you're the only begotten Son of God. Come into my life. Be my Lord and my Savior. It's as simple as that. Displayed on the screen is diverse information on how you can interact and reach out to us. Take advantage of it, and I'll be expected to hear from you. Till I come your way again, same time next week. I want to tell you, don't give up. Faith works. It's working and it will work in your life. God bless you.